In this video, we'll be talking about why you should never play blackjack, and it all comes down to probabilities. So before we start talking about the math behind it, let's just talk about, you know, how this is played. So pretend it's just me versus the dealer. So here's the dealer's hand, here's the player's hand. So the dealer is going to deal. He's going to give me a card, he's going to give himself a card, he's going to give me a card, and then he's going to give himself a card, but it's going to be face down. Now this is where, my dis where I start getting my disadvantages, because I don't know what he has, therefore it makes it a little bit harder to beat him. Anyway, the objective, as most people know, this game is also called 21 sometimes. I want to try to get as close to 21 with the sum of my cards as possible without going over. But the real objective is I need to be able to beat the dealer at the end. And we'll see how the dealer plays. So in this case, I have 17. I think maybe that's pretty high. So I just stay. I don't take any more cards. At this point, the dealer is turning over his card. And the dealer has a fixed way to play. If the sum of his cards is... Uh, less than 17, then he will keep taking cards until the sum goes greater than or equal to 17. And if the sum is already greater than or equal to 17, then he stays, and that's his final total. In this case, it's 18. All face cards are worth 10, and 10s are worth 10, so there's a lot of 10s in the deck, which will be important later on. But he has 18, and I only had 17, therefore he won that hand. So already we see that he's winning. But, I mean, we can do a few more hands. So again, it plays, he gives me a card, he takes a card. He gives me a card, he puts a card face down right here. So this time I have 15 and I see he has a high card. So I think maybe he has a high chance of this also being a high card. So maybe I need to beat him. So let's say I decide to hit and always I have to go first and he goes second, which we'll see is a big ad uh, advantage to him as well. So I'll take a card. Now I busted because I have 10, 20, 25, which is over 21. So regardless of whatever he had, I already lost all my money to the house. So just to see what he did have, he had 18. So he would have had to stop. Okay, so he won that one. Um, so just like that, let's just do one more round. So again, I get a card, he gets a card, I get a card right here. He gets a face down card. Now I have 12, right? So it's very unlikely that I'll bust because the only way I'd bust is if I get a, a 10 because then I get 22. So uh, I'll take a card. Let's say, so I'm at 17. So let's say, you know, I want to stop. So then he will play. He'll turn over and somehow he had a 2 also. So he has 12. Now the rules say he doesn't have 17 yet. So it's not his choice. He must keep going until he reaches 17. So he'll take on the one. He also gets a 5, 17. So we both stopped. We have a tie right here. Now, in most casinos, a tie means you'll just get your money back, and it's as if that round never happened. But in some nasty casinos, uh, actually, they'll take your money, and we'll see why that's a pretty that's a pretty nasty strategy to have. But anyway, that's how you play it. So what we're going to focus on in this video is the dealer, how the dealer plays. It seems very natural. You know, they just have some basic rule. A until they reach 17, they take cards. If they're already 17 or higher, they stop taking cards, right? We'll see how this strategy is actually very, very crucial and how it leads to a average value of the dealer of 20.4. That's right. They have an average value of 20.4 out of 21 in the long run playing these kind of hands. And we'll see, you might ask, why don't I just play that kind of strategy as well? And we'll see why you cannot play that strategy and expect to win most of the time. Now let's get right into the math of this. So why you should never play blackjack? We're going to narrow all this down to the expected value of the final dealer hand. So F will stand for the final dealer hand. So as we saw in the previous hands, uh, the final dealer hand was sometimes 18. Sometimes you had to keep taking cards until it was 17. Sometimes even he'll bust. He'll be at like 16, and then he'll grab another 6, and then he'll be at 22, which means he would have lost if I hadn't. And he would only play if I hadn't lost yet, so therefore I would have won. Right, so we're just trying to figure out what's the average value of this final dealer hand. And we'll find out the answer to this question is 20.4, which is very, very interesting because that means on average they're getting really, really close to 21 without going over, which is exactly what the casino wants. Um, so let's go on. It's actually a pretty simple calculation. Um, we won't go too in-depth into everything, but let's just talk about at a high level at least what each of the parts are and explain how to calculate them. So the expected value of the final. So we're going to appeal to the expected value theorem. So it's basically we can split up the expected value by conditioning on certain events and then taking the probability of those events multiplied. So this is a, basically it's a basic probability. So we have the expected value of the finer, final dealer hand is equal to the expected value of the final dealer hand given the initial hand, the initial two cards, is less than 17 times times the probability of this event, plus the expected value of the final dealer hand if the initial uh, two cards sum up to something greater than or equal to 17, probability that i is greater than or equal to 17. Now I've chosen to condition on 17 versus greater than or equal to 17 because that's kind of the determining factor of the dealer's behavior uh, as per house rules. 
So now I've labeled one, two, and three because we're going to go and calculate each of these separately. We're going to go to the first one first. This I didn't put a number on because this is just one minus this because the probability of i less than 17 is just one minus the probability of i greater than or equal to 17 because that's the only possible uh, things in the universe that could happen. So let's go ahead and calculate the first one. We're just going to calculate the probability. This ends up being the easiest and most straightforward to calculate, and most of the math is done here for us. So we're trying to calculate the probability that i, the sum of the first two cards, is less than 17. So we can do this by uh, doing a bunch of conditioning. So i is really what? i is i is equal to c1 plus c2. That is the sum of card 1 and card 2. So we can sum. We can do the sums of probability that i is less than 17 given card 1 is equal to i, where i ranges from 1 to 10. Uh, so I should note here, we're doing a few simplifying assumptions. Uh, there is the rule of a sometimes standing for 1 or 11. We're going to pretend it stands for 1 here, just to simplify things. Uh, so we're saying the highest card is 10, and therefore the highest hand you can have is 20, if you have two tens. okay? Um, we might do some more detailed analysis later, but this is very high level, just trying to show that the casino has a great advantage right off the bat here. So it's a uh, probability that i is less than 17, given that the first card is i, probability for uh, first card is i. This is again just using, um, we're just using the uh, conditioning probability. We're just breaking up the probabilities into smaller parts and then we're multiplying by those parts here. Okay, so this is basic theorem in probability. So we're summing from i equals 1 to 10. So now we see that for i equals 1 through 9, this is the same. This is 1 over 13, the probability that the first card would be equal to that number because there's four such cards out of 52 in the deck. Now, but 10 is different because 10s are not only 10s, but also jacks, queens, and kings. So we have 16 10 valued cards versus 4 for every other one. So that's not a problem. We'll just split it up. So we're going to do the sum from i equals 1 through 9, where each of these probabilities is indeed 1 over 13. So I can pull it out right at the front, and I'll keep this part. So I've broken this i as c1 plus c2, card 1 plus card 2. Probability card 1 plus card 2 is less than 17, given card 1 is equal to i plus, and I'm doing the special case for 10, where the probability is 4 over 13. Uh, and again, the probability c1 plus c2 is less than 17, given c1 is equal to 10, because now we know i is 10 for this specific case. Okay, that's not a big deal. So now we're given that c1 equals i. So we can go ahead and plug in i for c1 into here. So we get a restatement like this, and we get a restatement like this. And I've done c2 is less than 7, because if c1 is 10, we can move that to this side, and c2 has to be less than 7. Now notice that uh, these are no longer necessary, this conditioning piece, because we've already included that information, so they're just being redundant, so we can just drop it which we've done here. It's the same statement as this one, just dropped. And now it's just basic, you know, just writing it out. So we have this 1 over 13. Now if you look at, what if we do i equals 1? Plug that in here. c2 is less than 17 minus 1 is equal to 16. What's the probability that c2 is less than 16? Well, the max c2 can be is 10, so of course it's less than 16. Of course it's less than 15, 14, 13, uh, 12, 11. So for all those, we have 1. So all six of those, we get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So I get 6. Now the first interesting thing happens when we get uh, i is equal to uh, 7. Because when we get i is equal to 7, we have c2 is less than 10, which actually has a non-1 probability because we don't want to get 10s. So we get 9 over 13, 8 over 13, 7 over 13, and that's it. So these are these four. And now this one is even more basic. So we have that 4 over 13. What's the probability that C2 is less than 7? So it could be ace, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's 6 of them, each with probability 1 over 13, so it's 6 over 13. So it, that was a little bit, you know, tedious, but we every every step made sense, and we got, in the end, uh, around 0.75. So what does that mean? Going back to our number 1, we see that the probability that the initial hand is less than 17 is 0.75. And that means we can also fill in this thing, because remember we said this is just 1 minus that, so this is 0.25. Alright, so we're actually making progress. Now we just have these two to figure out. So these two, we'll just do a few examples, because these can be kind of tedious, but we'll see how to do them. So the first one, label 2, is the expected value of the final dealer hand, given that the initial dealer hand is less than 17. Now we're going to split this up again. We're doing a lot of expected value uh, conditional probabilities in here because we kind of have to. So we can split this up as the expected final value of the dealer hand, given that i, equals equal, I is equal to 2, because remember, i is less than 17, there's a lot of things contained in here. We can have i equals 2, 3, 4, all the way to 16. So given i equals 2, times the probability that i is equal to 2, given i is less than 17. So we have this information, and we're just conditioning on this event here, okay? And adding up all those up until 16, because that's the last thing less than 17. Expected value of the final value of the dealer hand, 
uh, given i is equal to 16. Probability is i is equal to 16 given i is less than 17. Okay, that's how we do it. And uh, this might seem kind of weird, esoteric, but let's, I have a little picture right here to kind of explain it. So in our universe, when you're conditioning, you're making a new universe. So we're doing i is less than 17. This is our universe right now. I can be 2, 3, all the way to 16. That's all we're considering. Now, splitting it up is kind of like doing this. We're doing the expected. So so for each of these, there's an expected uh, final value of the dealer hand, right? So if in the universe of i equals 2, there's an expected final value of the dealer hand. In the universe i equals 3, there's an expected value of the final dealer hand. Same for the universe where i is equal to 16. Okay? So we're going to do what's the expected value of the final dealer hand given i is equal to 2, which is in that universe. But that universe only happens a certain probability of the time in this whole universe right here. So we need to multiply that to get the true expected value across all these universes, which together make up our conditioned universe right here. Okay, so let's just give an example of how to calculate a few of these factors. We won't do all of them because it's very time consuming. So for example, let's do um, let's do probability that i is equal to 2 given i is less than 17. So we'll do what's the probability that i is equal to 2 given that i is less than 17. It might seem difficult, but if we just use Bayes' theorem, uh, we can rewrite it as this. We can write it as probability that i is less than 17, given that i is equal to 2, times probability that i is equal to 2, divided by probability that i is less than 17. It seems like I just made it more complicated, but some things are very canceling out. Uh, this thing up here. What's the probability that i is less than 17, given that i equals 2? Well, if i equals 2, we know i is less than 17. So this is just going to 1. We don't have to worry about it anymore. What's the probability that i is equal to 2? Uh, notice this is no longer conditional. This is just from the initial get-go. So i is equal to 2 only if we draw two aces, which means uh, 1 over 13 times 1 over 13. So we have 1 over 169. And what's the probability that i is less than 17? We just calculated that. It's 0.75. So we just do this divided by this, and we will get this factor right here. And we can do that for all the probabilities we see. But there's also different kinds of terms in here. For example, we want to know uh, the expected value terms. So we'll do an example with 15 because it's a little bit easier to comprehend. What's the expected value of final value of dealer hand given that the initial value of the dealer hand is 15? That means he's gotten 15, and he needs to get to at least 17. He needs to keep drawing cards. So what's the maximum number of cards he'll need to draw? The answer is 2, because if he draws an ace, uh, then he's at 16. And then at that point, no matter what he draws, he's going to go 17 or over, even if he busts, right? So we're going to need to condition this again. There's a lot of conditioning going on. So we have expected value of the final dealer hand, given that i equals 15, and d equals 1. So this d stands for how many cards you draw, so, and then that's times probability that d equals 1, plus expected value of the final dealer hand, given, uh, again, i equals equal 15, and d equals 2. You draw two cards, times probability that you draw two cards. Uh, so now we can just go step by step through it. And again, we're just doing one example, uh, one representative. You could, if you can do all of them, it would take a long time to do all of them. But they're not very hard. You just do them in the same way. So now, what is the probability that um, we had to draw two cards? That can only happen if you drew an ace first, because even if you, do a, if you drew a two first, you'd be done. So that means it's the probability of drawing an ace uh, right off the get-go, which is 1 over 13. Therefore, d equals 1. The other possibility is 12 over 13. Now, these we have to be a little bit careful. What's the expected value of the final hand? Uh, what's the expected value of the final hand? If i is equal to 15 and we drew two cards, so that means at some point we were at 15, we drew the ace, we got 16, and now we draw one more card. And that card, uh, it could be anything. So we're going to assume it's the average value of all of the cards in the deck. And we can do a separate calculation on that, but it turns out the average value of all the cards in the deck is 6.54, right? So it's going to be 16 plus that average, whatever next card we get, 6.54, for a 22.54 is what we put in right here. Okay, uh, and now this last thing, what's the expected value of the final value of the, uh, the final dealer hand if i is equal to 15 and we just drew one card? If we just drew one card, what do we know? It's not an ace, because if it was an ace, we'd be in this bottom case here. So that means what's the average value of all the cards without the aces? The answer is 7. So we're expecting to get 15 plus 7, or 22, as our expected final value. So now we just multiply all these things together, blah, 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 and we get something a little bit greater than 22. Okay, so that means that the expected final value of the hand, if you have i equals 15, is 22, which means you bust. So the dealer doesn't really doesn't want to have 15, because that means in those situations, he's going to have uh, 22 in the end. Similarly, we can do that for all of them. We can do it like that. And what we really care about is the final result, right? So this was uh, number two, number two. So 
it actually turns out, even though we have cases where the dealer is expected to bust, overall, overall, we see that in this case where I is less than 17, the expected final value is 20.9. That's about as close to 21 as you're really going to get. So that's not the final answer here. But that means in the cases where I is less than 17, which is 75% of the cases, which is quite a lot of them, the expected final value of the dealer hand is 20.9. You already see how the casino is kind of making this uh, kind of like a rigged game, maybe very advantageous for the dealer. Uh, okay, anyway, so all we have to do is calculate number three. Now, number three is actually easier. Uh, it's down here. So we want to find the expected final value given that I is greater than or equal to 17. Now, let's think for a second. If I were greater than or equal to 17, the dealer would just not draw any cards. So the expected final value is just I. So what we really want is the expected value of I given I is greater than or equal to 17. This is not that hard because we can just appeal to the definition of expected value and say I is either 17, 18, 19, or 20. Remember, we're not doing the whole 21 thing right now. So we have 17 times the probability that i is equal to 17, given i is greater than or equal to 17, plus blah, blah, blah. 20 times the probability that i equals to 20, prob uh, given i is greater than or equal to 17. This is, again, just expanding using the definition of expected value. Now we're going to use Bayes' theorem again here. So we have 17 times uh, the top probability that i is equal to 17 over probability i is greater than or equal to 17. And the bottom denominator, where are we going to get that from? That is just 0.25, as we calculated at the very beginning. So all these denominators are 0.25. And where are we going to get the numerators from? What's the probability that i is equal to 17? Remember, we're no longer conditioning on, on anything. So we can just uh, we can just go straight into just looking at different combinations and just figuring out how to make 17 and stuff like that. But anyway, when we do that, it turns out what we get is 18.7. So it's, it's not as good, but it's still safe. What that means is, so let me just write down the answer here, is 18. Point seven. So we have all our pieces in place. Let's just talk about them before we do the final sum. But the point is, uh, even if we have i is greater than or equal to 17 from the get-go, which happens only 25% of the time, the dealer is still expected to stay under 21, either it's at 18.7. Obviously, that makes sense, because if you're greater than 17, you're also less than 21, so you're not going to go over. But still, you know, it's 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 a pretty good amount right here. They're not staying at 17. They're a pretty good amount. But this 20.9 is very concerning for the player. So now if we add all these up, there's just four numbers. So you do a multiplication, a multiplication, add them together. You're going to get 20.4. That means the expected final value of the dealer hand in blackjack is about 20.4, which is just shy of 21, which is very, very interesting. Now you're asking, why don't I just play with this strategy? Why don't I just play the same as dealer? I'll just, every time I see a 17 or under, then I'm just going to uh, keep getting cards until I get 17 over. If I have 17 over, I'll just not do it. Well, it, we can do a separate video on this, but it turns out because the dealer gets to go second, because you have to go first and you might bust, in which case the dealer just wins, because of that slight advantage, it's actually not very slight. What turns out to happen is that you'll only win 28% of the time if you end up using that strategy. So hopefully this kind of shows you something about the uh, dealer's the house advantage in blackjack.